When we install a set of component speakers into a custom car audio system, it can be advantageous to run those speakers active. So what does active mean? That means we connect the speakers straight to the amplifier and use the crossovers on board the amplifier or in a digital signal processor to limit the frequencies going to the speakers. Now there is something that we need to be really cautious about so that we don't make a mistake. The tweeters in our component set of speakers are sensitive. If we ever make a mistake in setting the crossover values for the tweeters too low, or if there's turn on pops or other system noise, we can destroy our tweeters very quickly. So how do we protect the tweeters and save ourselves the headache of having to replace them. We can use these guys, a capacitor. But these come in all different sorts of ratings. How do we size them? How do we wire them in? That, my friends, is coming up. So how does this actually work? What's the point of using the capacitor? The capacitor increases resistance of a circuit at lower frequencies. So at lower frequencies, it's going to limit the output of the tweeter and protect that tweeter. Now there are different size capacitors rated in microfarads. See that little U looking symbol there that stands for micro so this is a 12 microfarad capacitor and this one here is 15 microfarads there's all sorts of different sizes we need to determine what value of microfarad capacitor we need to use to determine this, we're going to use this formula here. C is the value of the capacitor. F is going to be our crossover frequency and RH is our actual speaker impedance. Let's first start with finding F, the frequency that we actually want to cut by using the capacitor. We want F to be greater than the resonant frequency of the tweeter, but we want F to be smaller than the actual crossover that we plan on using on our DSP or amplifier. For a full video about determining the X Actual crossover value, check out the link up in the corner of the screen. So as an example, let's say that we want our actual crossover value to be around 4500 hertz and we don't know F yet, let's figure out what the resonant frequency is. For the resonant frequency, we can check out the manufacturer's manual and we can see right here 1500 hertz. So we need a value for F that is between these two values. And a good rule of thumb is to double the resonant frequency. In this case, it's gonna be 3000 hertz for F. What's important to understand about these protection capacitors is if my actual crossover value on the DSP is something like 4500 hertz, the roll off is going to look something like this. So this capacitor is not even impacting the output of that speaker until you get all the way down here. You're not even going to hear it in comparison to everything else. I just wanna point that out so you guys understand this is completely a fail safe. It is not something that we're actually using to control the actual listening crossover point. So we've got our value here. We can add it to our formula. F is equal to 3000. Now we need to find RH. To find RH, we can literally just measure the resistance across the voice coil of the speaker, but good speaker manufacturers will not only list a nominal impedance, they'll also list the actual DC resistance right here. So in this case, we're gonna use 3.5 ohms. So there we go, RH equals 3.5. I plugged everything in. I've got 0 0.159 divided by 3000 times 3.5. And that gives me this really small value, 0.00001514. This value is really small and this is where some people get confused. Don't forget that the units for C capacitance are microfarads. So that means we move the decimal place six places, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's going to be 15.14 microfarads. Now you won't be able to find a 15.14 microfarad capacitor, so we're just going to round down slightly and we're going to use 15 microfarads. This guy right here. As a side note, there are charts like this online that you guys can look up, but I recommend not relying on these charts. Just do the math because it's really not that complex, but we can use the charts to just double check our answer. If we go right here between 2000 and 4000, so it's gonna be between these two values for a four ohm nominal speaker, that makes sense. We had 15, which is between 9.94 and 19.88. So now I can show you guys how we properly wire this capacitor into the circuit with the tweeter. 
there. But real quick, before we do that, I want to thank monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. Valentine's Day was just the other day, and I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite things to do is give the gift of bass to my significant other. A great way to simply add a subwoofer system to a vehicle is the Audio Control ACM-1.300. This micro amplifier is compact, but has 300 watts RMS of power. Better yet, this amp has a line output converter built in, so you can simply tap into the stock car audio system speaker wires to get signal, and the amp also has Audio Control's AccuBase bass restoration functionality. Next time you need to do a simple bass add-on, definitely check out this amplifier. More details linked down in the video description. So now that I have my capacitor value, I want to take the factory tweeter, and I'm going to retain the tweeter harness. The factory tweeter wiring is more than substantial for the a low amount of power that's going to be going to my aftermarket tweeters, so I'm just going to retain this harness for use and ease of connection. After I remove all of that tape that was applied at the factory, I have a little something like this, and I've of course clipped the tweeter away. My math from earlier determined I need a 15 microfarad capacitor, so I have this guy right here. It's electrolytic and it's non-polarized, or also known as bipolar. This one is rated at 100 volts, which is effective to about 200 watts of power. So more than substantial, and I want to reiterate the point here for people that will say, oh, you should use a polypropylene capacitor. That would make sense if this was actually the crossover capacitor, but it's not. This is just a fail-safe capacitor in the event that my actual crossover fails. Now you'll notice I clipped the leads on the capacitor a little bit shorter just for better wire management and I'm now stripping the wires in preparation for soldering everything together. So here I am soldering the capacitor to the positive speaker wire and always make sure that you apply a strip of heat shrink to the wire before you do this joining process. I can't even tell you guys how many times I've forgotten that. So I'm shrinking this down now using a heat gun and earlier what I actually did is I clipped the positive wire on the speaker leads to the tweeter to be much more short that way it would match up with where the negative wire is you can see that here once everything is soldered and heat shrink together everything is nice and the same length for an added bit of protection i'm going to take this large piece of heat shrink here and add it over the entire assembly and don't forget that i have links to all of the different items that i'm using down in the video description to finalize this wire harness protect the wiring and make it so that the wires don't vibrate against any metal surfaces i'm using this soft tape from jk tapes i always like to take a little bit of the tape and fold it over on itself and leave a little tab that way if i ever do need to unwrap this tape it's much easier to to do so. With the harness completed and the tweeter now protected with this capacitor, I can install the full assembly back into the vehicle and install the tweeter. And here they are. As a quick side note, if you'd like to see the full fabrication process for these tweeters in the sale panel, you can check out the other video on my channel. So here on this channel, we learn how to master car audio and design, build, and install our dream car audio systems. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy some of my others. Check them out here on screen. A special thanks to Audio Control for being a sponsor, along with Bernard. John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you guys for watching.